Alright guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm going to do um, 10 reasons why the North East is one of the best and safest places to live. Um, obviously I don't usually do this sort of content, so let me know what you think. Um, and also before I do get into the video, I'm going to be doing a Q&A uh, for my next video. So if you've got any Q&A questions, then leave them in the comments. But yeah, for those of you who know my channel, um, you'll, you'll know that obviously because I like filmmaking... Um, the North East sort of gives us some really good opportunities for filmmaking and for videos. And if you've seen a lot of my videos, you'll have seen some of the crazy places that we get to in, especially Northumberland. Um, and obviously for those of you who do know us in person, you'll know that I do complain about England a lot and that I don't particularly like it. That's more sort of, I guess, with the way it is, and like especially politically. And obviously the weather is a major, major negative especially in the northeast but you know after i've been on holiday for a few weeks or i've been away for a few weeks and i've come back you, you just do get a certain just something which you can't get anywhere else that you can find in the northeast i can't put my finger on what it is but it, it generally is a really great place to live um so yeah that's what i'm going to get into 10 reasons why the northeast is one of the best places to live but also one of the safest with some sort of reasons that which you might not necessarily think of so number one is sport um i mean the, the northeast generally just is great for sport i mean the whole of newcastle is basically built around st james's park in newcastle united and i don't think there's a club ever in the world which is, has been more supported than newcastle united um you know i'm not a massive supporter of them but if you do live in newcastle you can't help but but follow them you know, I haven't been to a match in, in years, but when I have been to matches, the atmosphere is just incredible. Um, and obviously, we've got other big sports and sporting events like the Great North Run. Um, and obviously, because we are near the coast, there's a lot of water sports as well. Like in Time Off, you've got, you've got surfing. Um, and obviously, we've got like the Cheviots and that nearby. So, you've got a lot of other sports and activities with that. Number two is cost and um, the price of houses in the northeast is pretty much the lowest in the whole of the uk um and you know the standard of living as well is is really cheap compared to other places in the uk number three is that you can experience city and countryside life at the same time obviously we've got a whole urban area of tyneside sunderland washington newcastle but in no time at all you can be out in, uh, you know, the wilderness of Northumberland. You know, you'll you'll have seen on some of our videos within an hour's drive, we're in crazy places in the middle of creepy forests, abandoned bodies, and all this kind of crazy stuff. Number four is natural beauty and history. So obviously, with the geographical location of the northeast, in the past it's been a battleground between the English and the Scots. And over time, that has left some of the most remarkable historic scars. Like, we've got tons of castles, we've got Hadrian's Wall. I'll get into that all in the next point. Um, and then, obviously, we've got the natural beauty just in general. Like, we've got some of the best beaches in the UK. And the look of the landscape in general is just really nice. Number five is all the things to do in the northeast. So, obviously, in Newcastle itself, you've got the nightlife, which is some of the best in the north of England. Um, and then you've got all the shopping as well and the met places like the Metro Centre, which is one of the biggest shopping centres in Europe. Um, and another thing I'd just like to mention about just the city centre in Newcastle is there, there's actually nine Greggs in the city centre, just the city centre of Newcastle, nine Greggs. That just shows you how much we love our Greggs and our pasties. And then obviously outside of Newcastle, you've got all of the other places and things that are great to do in the northeast. So you've got Tynemouth, Bamburgh, Farne Islands, Holy Island, Craster, Dunstanborough, Ford Needle, Annick, Cragside, the Cheviots, Kielder, Hadrian's Wall, Beamish, Marsden and Souter, Angel of the North, Penshall Monument, the Quayside, Walkworth, Durham Cathedral, High Force, St. Delville Hall, Morpeth, Woodhorn Colliery, Belsay Hall, Kirtley Hall, Hexham Abbey, Beesworld, and then you've got all the museums as well in the northeast, and just all the other stuff in general that I haven't mentioned that really make the northeast great for things to do. Number six is transport and access. Um, now I know everyone hates on the Tyneway metro system, 
but it actually generally is really good and you know not a lot of other places have something like that so I really should be grateful of it even though it does need a lot of work doing to it but yeah we've got the metro system We've got the airport, obviously, which flies to places as far as Orlando and Dubai. And if you do need to, for some reason, go to London, we've got the train. And, you know, I was looking online and you can get to London for cheapest of about £20 from Newcastle, which really is a good price, to be honest. And then we've also got the ferry as well, which will take you to places like Amsterdam. So now I'm going to get on to the reasons why the northeast is actually one of the safest places to live. A lot of these are probably actually overlooked and not a lot of people have thought about, but because I'm a geography nerd, um, you know, some of these things I do, I do actually think about quite a lot. Number seven is natural disasters. Now, the northeast is actually in a really good place for natural disasters because basically we, we don't get any. The worst thing that we've had Recently was the back end of some of the hurricanes, but there weren't hurricanes by the time that they hit us because obviously we're, you know, too far north to experience hurricanes, so we don't get hurricanes. Um, you know, the worst thing that we do experience is high winds, and a few years ago in 2012, we did have, we did have Thunder Thursday, which was like a supercell storm thing, and that caused a bit of flooding, but that's about the worst that we'll have. Um, we're not in the tornado alley of England which runs between sort of like from Manchester to Birmingham and London that sort of area and then the, the south of England so we're, we're not in the tornado alley so I don't think we've ever had a tornado at least not in my lifetime and um, with tectonic plates and boundaries we're really far away from any of the plate boundaries so we basically don't get earthquakes I'm touching my desk which is made out of wood as I say all of this you know, just in case something did happen. You know, there has been earthquakes in the UK, but I don't think there's been any that have struck the Northeast, you know, in recent times. And if there is earthquakes in, in, in England, then they're generally really small anyway. And then obviously we don't have, we have extinct volcanoes, but we don't have any active volcanoes either. Number eight is global warming. Now, the Northeast is generally pretty one of the best places to live if you're going to experience global warming and um, for a start would we'll be all right with rising temperatures since it's so fucking cold most of the time anyway but obviously the other thing that's associated with global warming is rising sea levels now i've actually found an article online which suggests that scientists think that the uh, sea levels could rise by more than 15 meters by the year 2500 now if this is the case and we assume that the seas actually are going to rise by about 15 meters in the next say 500 years then the northeast would actually be pretty intact by this um, I've actually found a site where you can look at your elevation and so sort of the area where I live in which is quite near the coast on average is about 30 to 35 meters above sea level and obviously nearer the coast it's more sort of like 20 to 25 but it's still above 15 um, Centre of Newcastle is almost 50 metres above sea level, so that would be completely fine. Now, I have actually went all out here, and I've created a projected map of where the future coastline could be. Um, obviously, Blythe would pretty much lose Blythe because there's, that is really low. There's no cliffs there, and again, with the Lynx and Whitley Bay, there's not really any cliffs there. So, would lose most of the Lynx in Whitley Bay, um, and then a lot of places round sort of obviously the quayside and the river Tyne but if we now have a look at other UK cities like London that would be affected by this uh, Hull would be severely affected by this and Middlesbrough would also be affected by this I know Middlesbrough is technically in the northeast but as you've kind of worked out by now I'm not really including it sorry to anyone who is from Middlesbrough but yeah I mean London would be losing stuff like Big Ben the Shard that would be gone Chelsea and Stamford Bridge would be underwater. Buckingham Palace would even be gone. Canary Wharf, that would be affected. City Airport would be gone. Blue Water Shopping Centre would be gone. And other places around the estuary, like into Lakeside. And then Barking and Dagenham would also be gone. But then if we look at the northeast, I think the most valuable thing we would lose is probably the amusements in Whitley Bay. And, and the Spanish, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, I mean, obviously, yeah, we'd lose them, and we'd lose, like, St. Mary's Lighthouse as well, 
The main thing that the North East would lose would be the Metro Centre, which is coming up at about 5 metres above sea level, so the Metro Centre would be unfortunately affected by this and gone. Obviously, I said most of Blythe would be gone and Canvas and up towards that area, but I'm not, sorry to run on from Blythe, but I did my driving test there and ever since that, I fucking hate Blythe now. So, sorry, but that wouldn't really affect me that much. But yeah, I mean, the, the North East would be pretty much all right. I mean, obviously, places around the quayside. The Sage actually wouldn't be affected because the Sage is actually quite high up. But I mean, really, if this sort of thing does happen, compared to other places, we're going to be really lucky. So number nine, a little bit of kind of controversial one, and I'm hoping that this doesn't change ever after I make the video, but as of the time that I'm making the video, there hasn't been a modern day terrorist attack in the Northeast. I think there probably has been ages ago in the past, maybe stuff with IRA, I'm not too sure about that. But there hasn't been like a modern sort of radical Islamic, whatever, friggin' ISIS you want to call it. Hasn't been anything like that up here. Funny story, I was actually gonna, because a lot of you will know I upload a Comic Con video every year. Um, I was actually gonna plan to go this year and then I decided not to for some reason. But Badger ended up going and I'm really pleased that didn't actually go because the Metro Radio Arena have now got a policy where you are not allowed on the site of the whole arena with a bag and they actually have nowhere for you to store it which is really disgusting to be honest with you. Like any normal establishment would just do a bag search but apparently they were telling you to put them um, underneath the bridge near the arena or something. We are taking precautions and there has been a couple of incidents recently where people have been arrested but it is safe in terms of modern day terrorism it is a safe place to live i hope that doesn't change but yeah number 10 laws and regulations obviously this sort of thing just applies to the whole uk in general but obviously the northeast is in the uk so i do want to talk about one of the reasons why it makes the northeast safe and that is generally just because the whole of the fucking UK is so serious and regulated that it's actually really hard for anything deadly horrific to to happen. If you you know, if you look compared to America, you know, gun laws, um, there's so many cases of friggin' people wanting to sue you for doing this and fucking all this shit. Uh, this is kind of me having a rant at the at the way the country is. But yeah, it, it it's really, really regulated and there's so many laws that it, I mean, it does make it a very safe place and everyone's just generally really serious, you know, especially when it comes to on, on the roads as well in the UK, you know, you look at other countries and you got people flying around on the back of friggin' mopeds with great big bits of friggin' cardboard that they would have bought from B&Q or something like that and people, you know, going around in cars which are just unsuitable for the roads, you know, in Britain, you know, you can't, you're not allowed to do that, basically... I'm just saying that the UK in general is just actually a really safe place to live. But obviously that applies to the North East as well. That was, yeah, that was number 10. But that that's pretty much my list. I, can't, I think I kind of like went off topic a, a little bit. But I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, especially if you're from the North East. And if you are new to my channel, then uh, I invite you to go and check out some more of the content. I mean, I, I don't usually do content like this, but I mean, if, pe if people like it and if it does well, I will do more content like this. So yeah, let me know. But I think I'm going to end the video here because it's probably really long and I've probably rambled a lot. So yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.